So a few months ago, I posted a video on Android 10 running on a Raspberry Pi. I feel like I have not done it justice. So I want to go back and really highlight what makes Android 10 better than any other operating system that you can run on a Raspberry Pi. After three months of using it, I place Android 10 on top of the list as of today. I am not sure what the future will bring, but I firmly think that if you really want a true operating system that you can use both as a tablet and a desktop, I think Android 10 is the way to go. If you are interested in installing and using Android 10, I have a complete installation step-by-step -step instructions later on on this video. Like I said, I have been using it for months now. I am using it for legit work with video chat, typing and printing Word documents and Excel spreadsheets. Web browsing speed is blazing fast and video playback has no buffering and no quality degradation. Overall, it is an excellent option. Just so you guys are aware, I am using an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 and it is not overclocked. I also used a 4GB and it works as good. Before I forget, some of my subscribers asked if there is a way to safely shut down the Raspberry Pi on Android 10. The best answer I have is using this Wi-Fi remote. They are available on Amazon. To shut down, all you have to do is press the shutdown button and hold it for 2 seconds. This menu will appear on the right side and you can gracefully shut down or reboot. You can also install shutdown apps, but in my experience, some apps caused the system to crash. It was better to simply cut off the power. Having one of these mini projectors made a lot of sense to me. A Raspberry Pi and this projector goes with me everywhere. I took it with me camping a few times this summer and I even used it for business presentations and inside the hotel room for entertainment. I personally find hotel TV small and the TV channels are so lame, so I basically connect the Pi to the hotel Wi-Fi and project whatever I feel like watching on a blank wall. In this video, I am going to cover some of the content that I covered in my previous video and additional features that I didn't cover in the past, so let's get to work. Starting with a YouTube video at 1080p, as you can see, there is no buffering or quality drop. It starts streaming at 1080p and it stays that way. I don't know what's going on here, but it seems like someone is not intimidated by the size of the lady. Oh, this one was just not having it at all. I tested the top 10 operating systems for the Raspberry Pi and all of them suffer some sort of issues with video acceleration. Twister OS is by far the next best thing there is. So far it remains one of the most complete Linux operating systems for the Raspberry Pi. The latest Ubuntu desktop 20.10 is very disappointing. In this Android 10 version, there is no hardware video decoding and encoding, but software decoding and encoding works and it works really well. Just watch how everything opens up and closes smoothly. We will check out Redbox and you will see how smooth everything runs at the get go and the video quality is pretty good. Just so you know, I am not fast forwarding anything in this video. I want my viewers to get the full experience and know what to expect. The same thing applies to Amazon video. It starts and it gets to work. No nonsense, no freezing. I do however want to specify that I am hardwired during this demo, but even on Wi-Fi, as long as you have a good connection, you should expect the same level of streaming quality. The same thing with Slink TV and Plex. I have a Raspberry Pi running my Plex server. If you are interested in using your Raspberry Pi as a Plex media server, check out one of my previous videos on how to install Plex on a Raspberry Pi.
Some of you guys asked me in the past about Zoom. Zoom doesn't work or better yet I have not figured out a way to get it to work yet. But if you need video chat, WhatsApp works. I have not had any issues with it and the video quality is good enough. Google Duo however works okay. I keep experiencing a 2 to 3 seconds latency which is a little frustrating when you are on a business call. Skype kept on crashing and I couldn't figure out what's wrong with it so I stopped right here. As I mentioned earlier, you can use Microsoft Office products. I used Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook. All the apps worked as they normally work on a PC or Mac. You can print documents, save to PDF. Printing can be very tricky, especially if you don't have a network capable printer or a wireless printer. Right here I switched to Wi-Fi and I did a quick test to see what I am getting. And I will play a full game of 8 ball and see if I am going to run into any issues. I think I played a good 5 minutes and I didn't see any freezing or buffering during the game. Now let's install Android 10. First thing we need to do is get on a computer, PC, Mac or Linux and go to constantkang.com. Select Raspberry Pi 4 and download the latest version of Android 10 from this link. I am assuming you already have an SD card inserted into your computer. Next, grab the downloaded file using Balina Etcher and flush it to a micro SD card. Once the process is complete, Remove the SD card from the computer and insert it in your Raspberry Pi. You should see this LineageOS logo. Make sure you allow it enough time to finish loading. This usually lasts a few minutes. From this point on, you can simply answer all these installation questions to get started. Now that we are in, we need to download and install OpenGAPS and boot to TWRP recovery. So we are going to open up a web browser and look for these two files, recovery to boot and OpenGAPS and download both files as I am showing you here.
Next, we need to move the two files where we can access them. So we are going to take them from downloads to Raspberry Pi root directory. Next thing we need to do is access the developer mode in Android 10. So we need to go to settings and look for build number. You want to click on it until it says you have enabled developer settings. Then back out of that menu and look for system. Click on it, go to advanced, developer options and enable root access and local terminal. Now you can get out an open terminal and type in SU and hit enter. Then type in rpi4-recovery.sh. Type in reboot and wait for the system to restart. If everything is done properly, you should see this screen. Now swipe to allow modifications. Install and install open gaps. Swipe to confirm flash. Wipe Dalvik, swipe to wipe, go back two times, select mount and check boot, system and USB OTG. Go back and click on wipe. Swipe to factory reset, go back when that's complete, click install, select recovery to boot, check reboot after installation and swipe to confirm flash. That should be it. You will need to complete some installation steps and sign in to your Google account. Once that is all complete, you should see a clean slate with Google Apps Store. You can install whatever is available for you at Google Apps Store. One last thing I have not covered before is the ability to use VPN. It is always a good practice to have some type of VPN. I used private internet access for this demo, but the configuration steps are pretty much the same for most VPN providers. All I had to do is install PIA app and log in. This brings us to the end of this video. If this helped you in any way, shape or form, please like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time. Bye for now.